as we get this started. To the top right hand side, our yellow Terran player is Ziggy, who's going to start sending an SCV across the map as down to the bottom left. Now, Red Frost is MC. All right. So, uh, a little bit of TVP action. And obviously the first time we're seeing Ziggy today. We'll be watching all of Ziggy's series over the next few uh, little while. I think we do Ziggy versus MC, then Ziggy versus Sort of, then Ziggy Alive, then Ziggy versus Solo. I think is the order we're going to do things in. And we also have a Live versus Sort of to cast as well. So we're really going to start seeing how this group shapes up. As we see, well, for the last, for example, the last series of MC right now. Then we're going to see one of the last series of Sort of and so on. So just starting to wrap, well, I say starting to wrap this group up. We're halfway through, so we're into the kind of like the latter stage of the group now in terms of figuring out how this is going. Rax drops down in the bottom left-hand side. So going to be a Reaper-based opening with the proxy here. And Ziggy looking to try and apply some pressure in the early stages on Operation Lockdown by Ezale. We'll be seeing the double cast, obviously, an MC scout, and there's no racks and all the rest of it. Let's take a quick rundown of the map before the Reaper starts to deal some damage. Factory is built at home. So main base runs down into the natural expansion. Natural expansion here set up to uh, have a you know pretty easy choke to hold. It's actually, I'll tell you what, this choke though is very close to where the Nexus is, I feel. We'll see how that plays out when we see some walling off of the natural later on. She actually builds a bunker behind the natural, so she's going to try and get that Reaper to be very annoying. Just let's look elsewhere on the map, though. Third base over here. There's a lot of very well-defined paths on this map, like up to the top, around through the center. Lots of little kind of just spaces you can't walk in. Interesting. Very kind of pathing base on this one. Well, let's see how it plays out as the Proxy Reaper comes in. And Ziggy already finding one and two probe kills. Good first little bit of damage. If a map gets selected for ladder, do map makers get paid or win anything? Well, the entire TLMC has prize money available. So the TLMC, don't forget, you guys can vote for your favorite maps from the TLMC next week after the... Or not next week, but it's after the tournament phase. There's an iteration phase where map makers can make edits to their map, map and submit a final version. Then you guys can vote for your favorite maps. And the winners of the TLMC get prize money just for winning the TLMC, even if their map doesn't go to ladder. So it's... Um, definitely prize money available. So yeah, map makers do get some prize money selected. I believe if you make it to the f as a finalist, you already get some prize money as well, just for having a map in the finalists of the map uh, of the map contest. Uh, someone correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I actually didn't know that last time, and I looked like a bit of a fool when I said they didn't. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, my bad see. Ooh, wouldn't mind going to get in position here. The Weepers jumping. The Weepers? The Reapers jumping out of uh, the bunker there. And some damage on that Stalker. I mean, now, though, the Stalkers are zoned out, right? Because you can't get rid of this Widowman without an Observer. You don't want to build an Observer. Maybe you sacrifice the Probe. Yeah, it makes the most sense, because then the Stalkers can continue to pick their way through this Widowmine and shut this down. Nice grenade bops the Stalker around. Doesn't quite save the Widowmine, though. Maybe if we got behind the bunker, it would have caused some more damage on the Stalkers. As this Widowmine here is going to get banned pretty quickly, so Ziggy won't find anything with this, as he has a Banshee and Cloak coming up back at home. Now, Widowmine actually surviving somehow as the next Widowmine helps to zone. Still got this bunk rope, but, well, believe it or not, two Reapers are not going to do that well against the Immortal. Nice little grenade back, though, to stop the Immortal coming forwards, but the wall off here is good as well, so the Reapers are taking way too long to hit the Mineral Line and will not be successful at all with this. Oh, there is a jump up ledge here, though. I didn't even realize that this was a ledge you could jump up. Probably saw that before the first Reaper when I was looking around at the map rather than at the Reapers. So that's just a nice little ledge you can utilize here. There's a couple probes going down. We now see Stalkers and an Immortal chasing that Widowmine away to the top side. That's a Widowmine shot to kill a Stalker right there as well. And well, MC with the Warp Prism up is going to start heading across the map to deal some damage. And what does Ziggy have to defend? Two Reapers, a Banshee, and about to be a Cyclone. It's not a lot. And obviously, the Banshee isn't on at home either. So the Banshee will have to try and deal some damage here. Pylons on the low ground, though, without a shield battery yet, means that these probes are in danger of the Banshee coming in and getting some damage. So Banshee shows up. Oh, he's fighting the pylon for some reason. Reaper's trying to kill more damage, uh, kill more probes in the main. Here comes the Immortal and Stalkers over here. Close up the Banshee, so we'll be able to put out some damage at least. And this probe count is dropping. Seven workers, eight workers killed and counting at the moment. 
The Cyclone locks onto the Prism, gets killed by the Immortal though. Ziggy losing out there as the SCGs continue to fight. Banshee again doing good damage, but MC can lift up these units. They want to lift up the Immortal next. 12 probes lost on the other side as the Reaper coming back into the main. Observer now out to help defend. 13 workers killed. The Reaper might get one more on top of this. Maybe even more than one more because the Stalkers still aren't in position. Good micro by Ziggy, of course. Good target fire on that one probe on the left there. And he's going to give up on this now. He's actually going to save the Reaper. Well, he's killed 15 probes but taken 11 SCVs of damage. After SCV is still being pulled in here. The tank pops out as well. This should be a shutdown. If he drops back down, he has to be super careful of the interference matrix. Wolf Prism should just leave. It's time to get out of there, I think. Ziggy so has a natural command center. He can float down to the low ground. A second of all just walks across the map. Oh my god. This is kind of crazy. Now we see, again, Raven on an interference matrix on the uh, prism. Could be really cool. Stop the lifting and saving of immortals. You see those immortals continuing to fight against this factory here. Ziggy so he needs to push forward to try and take that natural expansion. Doesn't have anything across the map to deal any further damage just yet. It looks like the MC will just lift up and back away. 12 workers ahead. He's definitely done enough to take a lead here in the early stages. So put himself into an advantage. Get this going. Rax lifts up, moves to the side, dropping down a reactor. This Rax is going to go down to attack lab as well. The Starfall also going to land as you see Stimpak upgrade getting started up. And two Banshees together. He will deal some good damage to the Immortals. Viking pushes back the Prism. Obviously, nice lift. And again, maybe if you hit the Interference Matrix on the Prism so you couldn't lift up the Immortals, but then I guess the Recall anyways. But maybe you killed one of the Immortals in that case. Anyways, good saving of the units from MC, and that's the big thing here. He didn't really lose much. Five Stalkers is obviously not nothing. He mostly just lost probes, but keeping his, you know, the Immortals alive, those tech units, is very vital. Whereas Ziggy lost himself a Cyclone, for example, and, you know, obviously lost a Banshee while harassing too, so... He doesn't quite have as much to maybe follow up with. Just going to be seeing those stalkers from MC just hanging out on the right hand side. The two Banshees coming along and how are they going to try and attack through in towards this mineral line it would seem. So here we go, two Banshees trying to move through in towards the main base. Doesn't find anything just yet though. As now Ziggy backs away up the left hand side. A couple of assimilators going to come down. MC now taking four extra gateways. Has that blink also just over halfway done. So he's getting his first tech structures and tech upgrades up and running now. These Banshees turn around and just going to come back in towards the natural expansion. And they're going to be able to, well, no, for some reason, just no observer. So we're going to see a bunch of probes going down. And this is damage that Ziggy really needs to get back into this game a little bit because he is down heavily on workers. So some damage like that would be, uh, is pretty nice. Viking and the Raven from Ziggy just going to patrol out to the right side then. You see the charge upgrades being Chrono boosted out in the Twilight Council. Extra gateways coming into play from MC. And you see Stalkers with the Observer in the middle finally finding one of those two Banshees that was so annoying. One Banshee on its own doesn't do a lot because of the shield batteries here. So you've got a lot more kind of leeway in terms of you can take a few shots before you're actually going to start losing probes. And again, Stimpak about to finish his combat shields will be finishing as well in the next couple of moments. Prism all the way to the right. As again, the pylon going to drop on down. And well, we see Ziggy just still hanging out. It's cool that we've gotten up to a two base play at least from both players. MC opting to expand up towards the third base as the Stalkers from MC still patrolling around. The Banshee coming through and lots of dead airspace here. I like this as a Terran player. Feels pretty good. What is this? Why is there... Are those plants? Or are they meteors? What is that though? That's not a meteor, right? That looks like a plant. Hmm, there's some floating debris here on Operation Lockdown. You can see the uh, stalkers pressing forward. Marines will stim in and chase those stalkers away. And observer at the front has to be a bit careful as well. I'm interested to look at the side of the map now and all the other stuff. God damn it. I want to try and see if there's anything cool hidden away. Ah! There's not enough time to stalk. I'm going on. I need to remember to do this at the start of the games. Well, we do see the units are still gathering up from Ziggy down onto the low ground here. As, I mean, MC has Blink Stalkers. He's got the rest of this army that should be ready to go somewhat soon. There you go, a few Tiny Templar Immortals sentries moving forwards here. And again, the Stalkers just ready to start applying some pressure. That bunker in some trouble here. The Raven doesn't go down, drops an interference matrix that's, uh, sorry, an anti armor missile that somehow hits his own two Marauders with that Blink away. So uh, only his own Marauders getting hit there. 
one of those moments where you just try and use the Raven Energy ASAP because it feels like it's about to die. Medivacs need to be careful and make sure the buyer's there to protect them. I kind of like the pattern on this map. It feels it feels kind of cool. Lots of chances to move around in different directions and you know having to keep up with where your opponent's army is positioned to be able to deal with it and so on. It feels um, it feels pretty awesome as we see those few stalkers hanging out over the left. Now Ziggy with a bit of a larger push. It looks like he's going to pull the boys. There's a little bit, I mean, there's rock space here. Maybe you could get like a tank siege there, but it's kind of on the wrong side. Maybe a tank in this little corner would be cool, but then you can attack over there onto it anyways. Oh my god, Storm's done. Storm being done against a, uh, an SCV pull is generally kind of the end of the game usually. The Storm just deals with those SCVs so easily and doesn't really worry about it like a Colossus play would. Interference Matrix does not manage to hit all the high temp of the four Storms as well. Tank just feels super late to siege, and MC is just a bit too far ahead. He's got a counterattack in the main base as well. Some zealots going huge and picking off a whole bunch of workers. But it might as well start to blow up an Archon, which is great, of course. But then there's just, again, no lines. And so MC will pick up the first game here against Ziggy. Clean, simple. Get this started up. And on the bottom right-hand side, down a map, our yellow Terran player is Ziggy. I just want to quickly remind you guys as well that the current map scores are, this is obviously Ziggy's first series. MC 3-3 free free means that with this win, now he's 4-3. and free. If he wins this game, he's guaranteed to be above sort of, which I think more or less would put him in a position where he can advance through this group every time, depending on if Ziggy then starts winning some other series. But obviously, Ziggy would have to not lose another series, basically, from then. So... If MC wins this map, he's in a very good spot to move through the group, and he is obviously the red Protoss player on the top left-hand side of the map here. Single SCV from Ziggy moving towards the upper left side, getting this started up, so... Wardy, look at the map, now is the time. Yes, as we have just a little bit of a basic, let's see what's around the side. This is a city-based map, so he's got some trees. Oh, what are they? Are they little beach houses? Oh my god. They are little beach houses. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like this statue's a little bit of a, um, you know, you're on your holidays, you're sunbathing, and like, you know, the statue kind of covers you and shit. You're like, really? You know, not the best holiday resort, but I guess we'll take it. Ziggy blocks the refinery here, by the way. What else is on the map? Ooh, another little statue down on the bottom. So there's some really cool maps. There's really cool things around the edges here. It's always worth looking at sometimes. All right. All right, let's talk a bit about the map itself. Main base is completely separated away from everything. In fact, there's even some uh, some benches here, so you can have some lunch if you you know if you're on your know, breakouts that time as the probe in the main. You can just pop down, have some lunch, a nice little set. Uh, yeah, I like this map actually. It's, it's cute the design. Natural, very easily defended with a narrow uh, na narrow. It's a narrow and shallow entrance to the natural. And then you move into a third base very easily. Very, again, it takes all the boxes for being macro, right? It's big. The bases come easily. They're easily defended. They're in a nice, simple expansion pattern. So no surprise to see early expansion from both. But an MC pylon on the bottom side. Oh, Ziggy sees the pylon. Good catch. You can kill that probe maybe before the tech comes down. MC doesn't have the gas. So he will not be able to do that. As we do see the pylon will take some damage. So MC's proxy denied. As we'll see a starport proxy on the top side of the map from Ziggy. So again, this set to kill. Stalker as well, pushing through the center. Another Stalker as well. So now some gateway units alone coming across. MC will throw down the robot facility back in the main base. Oh, look at that. Yeah, someone just mentioned that the third base has no space behind the minerals. That is true, right? Like... If there's like a liberator here, I guess you can sort of hit it from up there. Well, that's weird. That is strange. It's a very interesting way to kind of set up the base. Hmm. All right, well, you see a couple of stalkers in the Zealot are going to be just fighting, but the Hellions out. I mean, Hellions don't seem like the best of fighting units, but they actually do surprisingly well just because the splash damage stacks up a bit and they can be repaired as well. So they'll push this away, just takes a little while. And uh, obviously take some damage on the depot during that. Oh no, now he's going to lose how he's going to be down super far forward to chase those stalkers down. And he didn't even commit for that one stalker. Didn't want to lose another Hellion. Well, Prism being crowned with three extra gates kind of feels like MC just wants to go for a big old counter attack. It feels like the Hellion reactor openings. Four gates and just pressure. 
does so, so much here because you're in a, suddenly a position where you just got a bunch of gateway units and the Terran's like, herpity derpity, I, I have nothing. Like, literally, I have, like, nothing to actually defend. Hellions are not fighting units. They're built here to kind of go with the starport that's proxied. And, you know, the medevac pops up, comes forward. There's nothing at home. The Banshee's going to be invested into you over here as well, so that becomes expensive. I mean, two Widow Mines, Marauder. The, this, I mean, there's a couple of Marauders, the Widow Mines as well. But you're really relying on a lot of luck here. I think you're defending this. However, the Hellions will start to deal some damage, so it does put MC in a position where he needs to deal damage. Five workers, eight workers killed so far. Eleven workers killed. Doing a very good job of this. The War Prism nearly went down. The Widow Mine getting a shot off, but there's nothing else that shoots up. Now the Widow Mines are not active, and the Stalker Micro is already looking to be very impressive here. Pressing forwards now, SCV goes down. More SCVs are dropping. Bunker probably going to fall as well. Another couple of Zealots walked in. We do see that Bunker being cancelled as we see the Stalkers pushing up the ramp. Marauder, he kept away at the moment here. Stalkers still dancing around. We do see those SCVs continuing to be picked off as well. Walking in another couple of Stalkers. That's going to be GG and MC.